In this odd position, I can barely get it to full throttle even. So this one moves them a little farther apart and then at a different rate. No known pets around here, but you never know. This uh, appears to grab tight enough, so that must be an advantage of this domino throttle housing. Well, hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650E here, and welcome to season four of the new bike build series. And this season, we're using this beautiful 2018 Yamaha R1M, and with the help of our channel sponsor, Manny from Moto Million, we're gonna turn this motorcycle into something more breathtaking, striking, and amazing than it currently is. At the end of the build series, we are giving this motorcycle away to one of you awesome people who have supported the build series. Information on how you might win this motorcycle is in the description. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you're currently a subscriber, tap that bell so you can be notified when new content is uploaded. In today's video, we're gonna continue on with the front of the motorcycle, getting some amazing throttle stuff installed and Zach will tell us all about it. Hey, what's going on? What's Welcome up, man? back. All right. All right, another exciting episode here. Yes. We got a uh, domino quick turn throttle. So what's that, what that is gonna do is change how far your wrist has to move to open it all the way up to full throttle. Okay. So with this throttle, I mean, I can't, in this odd position, I can barely get it to full throttle even. Yes. So sometimes when you're riding, you have to do what's called re-grip and move your hand forward. So we want to lose that re-grip, especially this is super handy on the racetrack where you're trying to stay up in the upper RPM range of the motorcycle. So yes. that your wrist isn't downwards, you can correct it so your wrist is up a little bit. That makes sense. So uh, they give you different, uh, what do you call these things? These Toronto spacers? Yeah, they're like different spacers that will uh, affect how the throttle cable is pulled at what rate it's pulled at. Mm -hmm. Three interchangeable rings is what they, they just call them rings. Okay. So uh, basically that sits right inside our housing here. We also get this really cool aluminum housing. That is nice. It matches our levers. Yes. So right now we got the red one in. You can see red is a uh, progressive. I think we'll run with that one at first. Okay. The white is the pure, um, rapid one and they call it and green is normal okay. so we'll give this red one a shot yep but just it's overall uh i gotta put this back on here of course everything's falling yeah there we go it's overall distance that it turns is less you can see it can see doesn't that. turn very much at all yeah and then that ramp changes how fast the cable pulls Okay. So this one looks like it's going to be a little bit progressive probably at first because the cables are offset a little goofy. So this normal one, we can see their space real evenly yeah. close to each other. So this one moves them a little farther apart and then at a different rate so that as you pull it, it's probably going to go progressively slow hopefully and then it'll accelerate real hard about midway up. Oh, nice. It doesn't actually change anything, just the way it feels. Okay. So let's see what's involved in doing this. Now to install this, we have to use their throttle cables, which I was reading is actually a nice upgrade in itself. It has little, uh, let's open these up. Open up. You can look inside there. See there's a little nylon tube inside. Yeah. That's nice, because then you don't have to worry about lubing the cables ever. And usually cables that have that nylon tubing in there have a really nice feel to them. It'll snap back real fast. And yeah. Be nice and smooth. Not that the stock one, it doesn't feel too bad. Now there's three maps. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then... Thanks to our good buddy Nick Marino. Yeah, it's kind of nice that it's easy to do this, even though this bike's ride by wire. So the throttle cable is technically just moving a servo. You're not actually opening the throttles because it is ride by wire. The, the ECU or the motorcycle is doing that. Yeah. Where the S1000, we just plug a wire in. So to do that, there's a lot of engineering involved to make a quarter turn throttle work on that bike. This one with the cables, you, you're able to do it at home. Nice. So we got our clip-ons mocked up last time. Yes. They're looking good. We haven't been able to check it. We got to check, make sure everything will steer and is out of the way. But we're not to that point yet. So I'm going to go ahead and peel the rest of this stuff off just so it's out of the way. And then we'll pull the gas tank. We have to pull the air box off so we can get to the end of the throttle cables. Okay. So let's get to work. Yeah. All right, so as you can 
see we got the stock clip-ons out of the way, so we'll be able to do a turn test here in a minute. But uh, first, let's get these throttle cables changed out. We got the gas tank and the seat removed. We just gotta pull the air box back off. We did this before to change the air filter. Except this time we have to take the bottom of the air box off also. Oh, okay. Something new. Yeah, so we'll expose the throttle cables. Clean as a whistle? Yep, yeah. looks just like when we put it in. That's a good thing. Indeed. No known pets around here, but you never know. <laughs> right. Now, we just have, uh, there should be bolts on each throttle body. Yeah, hopefully they lift them exposed. And that's good, that should expose what we need. It's only one wire, we'll disconnect that. It's for the motor. This is the motor that makes those intake plenums go up and down. Oh, okay. This is where we needed to get to. Right here is our, the end of our throttle cable. You can see when you twist the throttle, it goes to this sensor right here. This sensor then goes to the computer. I don't remember where it's at on this, but oh, over here. It goes down to your ECM. The ECM comes back and tells this motor how far to open these plates. So all you're doing when you turn the throttle is you're moving this little sensor. So the reason there's two cables is the one cable pushes and the other cable pulls. The pull one is what you really need to work. The push is just for in case that one's stuck. That way when you roll the throttle forward, it would actually shut it. Okay. So it's like a backup safety device. Always gotta have patience when you're dealing with cables. Okay. If not, you will break them. Wow. And that would suck. Yeah. Not so much for this cable, but for the new one. We should release our throttle assembly housing. Wow. It's, it's kind of weird. They got some pretty good pinch points right from the factory. So it looks like we were right. The red one did wind up on top. The only thing that even, the only reason that even mattered was there's a screw that holds this bracket that holds both cables in. Yeah. So that has to be on the right side. And then once we got it all hooked up, you can see we're back to moving. And I did notice too while I was putting this on. Look at, look at this large ramp on this red piece right here. See this bump? Yeah. That's part of what makes it uh, pick the throttle up faster. If we look at the green one, you can see there's no ramp on either side. Yes. So it would be, the, it puts the least amount of stress on the cable. But it feels good, nice and snappy. So we just have to then adjust our free play. We can do our fine free play adjustment up here. Like I said, we're going to keep these down so it will look just like that. And uh, this is like our more uh, loose free play adjustment. We just need to make sure that there is free play and then we'll take out any of it up top there. Okay. So snug that up. That one's not in position. Those there, we'll put a little guide back on here. Put our air box back on. Don't forget to plug in the little stepper motor. And we'll just have to watch that this cable doesn't get pinched at all while we're putting it on, but that wasn't that difficult. So we're gonna see. It doesn't really have a pin in it. I don't know if we're gonna have to make some kind of detent or if this is gonna clamp down tight enough. We shall hmm. see. Okay. Usually a throttle housing has a little, uh, I guess we're gonna see. a little like uh, tit in it, and then you drill okay. a hole into the bar, and that's where it's gonna stay. Yeah. That way it doesn't rotate. But this uh, appears to grab tight enough, so that must be an advantage of this Domino throttle housing. Nice. You can hear we got awesome. I hear that. Nice and snappy, man. Snappy. This was a free play I'm talking about. You don't want you don't want it to grab the throttle plate right away. Not that you're really spinning the throttle plate down there, but for the sensor right away. Okay. So yeah, that worked out rather well. 
if we have too much or too little throttle free play, we dial it out right up here okay. with our adjusters. Definitely something, whenever you get a new bike, that you want to check if it's a huge difference. Uh, most, most bikes come with way too much throttle free play, you know. You really want a minimal amount. We might have talked about that one during the break videos or something. I, I think know. I remember a little bit. I think we might have. So that feels good. So we do have some uh, nice domino grips that are going to go on here too. Okay. We're not going to install them quite yet because uh, this is going to have to come back off. Hopefully there's enough room in our throttle cable so we can fit our switch housing on here. Yes. If not, I don't know. <laughs> we'll make it work somehow. All right. Well, I think that's it for today. Sweet. Uh, let's see. Can we see? Oh, yeah. There's a lot less. Uh, you probably can't see it, but yeah. I could stand even close to it and get it all the way wide open. Nice. So, way less fatigue on your wrist, and the uh, throttle cables seem to move real nicely. So, coming along. Yeah. Front of the bike back together here. Um, Eventually. We'll get our uh, switch housings. Yep. We'll get them installed. And, and then we'll be able to fire this thing up in here, eh? Yeah, we'll be able to fire it up, and I think everyone's going to freak out over these switch housings. They've been out there for a while, but yeah. you don't see them on street bikes too much. We'll probably have to bust out the label maker, because I can never remember what all the buttons do. We're me neither. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and all right. we'll catch everyone next time. Thanks, Zach. Well, that is awesome. All of Zach's hard work is definitely paying off on this beautiful 2018 Yamaha R1M. The person that wins this motorcycle as a result of supporting the new bike build series is going to be beside themselves when that happens. Information on how you can win this motorcycle is in the description. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you're currently a subscriber, tap that bell so you can be notified when new content is uploaded. The bike looks amazing. It's going to perform outstanding. And uh, we'll get this thing wrapped up real soon. Take it back to Ducati Detroit so our good buddy Nick Marino from X-Plane R1 Custom Tuning can retune the motorcycle after all of these awesome performance parts have been installed real soon, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for viewing the new bike build series. We'll catch you guys next time. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.